Fuck. All right, let's we're rolling. Rolling. Planet B presents presents Cult and Culture Podcast. Welcome to episode thirty of the Cult and Culture Podcast. I'm Justin Pearson, and I'm Luke Kinshaw. This episode is pretty wild. Um, features Tad Miller, who was the drummer of the iconic, I guess, power violence band, yeah. Coin, co- one of the uh, original coined termed band uh, jo- genres, mm-hmm. um, crossed out. Seriously, yeah. one of the most brutal, weirdest things to come out of San Diego. Um, yeah, I don't know. I grew up playing shows with Struggle um, and pl- Struggle playing with Crossed Out at the Che or wherever in San Diego. And they were always awesome to me and stuff. But like in more recent years, I kept seeing Tad. It shows that um, that Def Club was playing like at the Casbah or wherever. And, and we kind of became friends again. And um, the dude's awesome. Yeah. Um, so for me, as a as a 15 and 16 year old seeing Crossed Out, seeing something like that was pretty wild because uh, everyone thinks of like metal bands as like uh, brutal or evil. Right. And and seeing something like crossed out was just, it was like, to me it felt like the equivalent of seeing like a a serial killer. It was was like just so insane. And there was no like, no fluff. Like there was no like spikes Mm -hmm. or long hair or something like a metal band. It was just Uh, fucking really brutal shit. Um, and then also, like, if you pick that band apart, like, there were, like, surf riffs and then, like, and then just blast beats. It was mm-hmm. the weirdest shit. Yeah. Came out of nowhere, fucking changed the trajectory of music. I was I was really impressed with, like, his, um, his music upbringing and how he got to Crossed Out. And I was thinking about this today, about how not just with this podcast alone, but with all of them from the past, like, the connection between prog rock into punk and hardcore and how many of our guests have just been so influenced with prog rock and us too even with the new planet b album Mm -hmm. there's so much king crimson and yes inside of all of that shit and i was just so impressed how when once he said prog i was like oh yeah i get it yeah you know but so i for to me like prog rock or Mm -hmm. it just seems like on the out it's like the outer shell of of like regular rock. Mm-hmm. It it it, re, it like reformulates this like typical structure and totally. instrumentation. Yeah. And I think like it makes sense because if you, I wouldn't say you know like King Crimson or Yes is absurd, mm-hmm. but when you think about, or I wouldn't even say that I wouldn't even really think that now Crossed Out's absurd, but that was no. the, maybe the goal of the time i don't know maybe it was a subconscious goal because mm-hmm. for me the the locust whole idea was to sound like or just well, like the starting point of the locust mm-hmm. was to be like crossed out and and the whole time the locust was a band we wanted to be absurd however musically we could and and yeah. i and i feel you achieve that yeah mm-hmm. but I, but if you think about it like you think about yes fragile that record is mm-hmm. completely absurd yeah. it's fucking completely absurd yeah and so yeah those that like um, parallel between the, I don't even want to say genres, but the mm-hmm. two like sort of generations and mm-hmm. worlds of music totally well, it's makes crazy. Sense. Like in the history of it, a lot of it when it was coming out, like the early punk and the early prog, they didn't really like get along. Mm-hmm. I know there was some, there was a lot of issues where like punk hated fucking Pink Floyd. You know, and I don't really consider Pink Floyd a prog band, but a lot of the world does, mm-hmm. you know, so, but I'm going to go read more up on that because it doesn't make sense with our guest and their upbringing with prog and in, like they've mm-hmm. just merged these genres that it, but I'm I, really impressed. But it, you, Okay, so that's a good example. Like if you think about punk, you have like, that's this huge, vast uh, uh spectrum you mm-hmm. know you, you you do have like the sex pistols which were pretty punk at the time but now they're like a pop band and then you right. have like modern day punk i don't know like venus twins or something you mm-hmm. know where it's just there's it's completely different so if you yeah. think about prog even with like you you just um <laughs> accidentally mm-hmm. referenced pink floyd <laughs> but if you think about like that and then you think about like maybe a modern day you know like the mars volta or something mm-hmm. that's just so fucking vastly more insane yeah than Pink Floyd. So I don't know. It's yeah. genres are stupid. Um, 
I think that influence is um, interesting and at times very, very credible. And th and I think that mm. people's um, influences, musical or non-musical, seep in through ways that we don't even uh, aren't even aware yeah. of it. And also, uh, well, not also, but prog rock conversations can fucking last for days and days. <laughs> so we should get on with this. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry and, about that. Uh, when, when we dive into this, th we, we like the stuff that Tad jumps into right away is just so insane mm -hmm. and, and wild and not expected. And um, man, I'm forever grateful for Crossed Out and I'm so psyched um, that Tad is one of our homies and yep. he took the time to come and talk to us about shit. Um, so yeah, uh, here we go. We hope you enjoy this. Um, enjoy the blast beats. Yep. Hey everybody, <laughs> my name's Tad Miller. I play drums, and I would think that I'm probably here because I played in a band called Crossed Out. It was pretty much the biggest thing I've done. It's a pretty big fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Pretty, it's all right. Let I'm me pretty impressed it. by the fact that people still know what it is. Yeah, yeah, maybe more now than they did at the time. Maybe. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of a weird thing to think about. Well, yeah, especially over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh I I have all these um there's all these things that have like been said when I discovered Crossed Out and things that I don't know that were true. Like one 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 person told me you were a jazz drummer or a trained jazz drummer. Um Is there any <laughs> truth to that? I, I, <laughs> no. I loved jazz when I was learning to play. I was very into progressive rock. Yeah. And was going to start going into jazz when I started playing in Crossed Out and just had no want to do that after playing hard music and that's one of the things about drumming as far as hard stuff goes is I'd rather even do it than listen to some of the music because mm. it's so fun to do it on the drums mm -hmm. so like playing fast and hard is where I'm at and I played music in high school um, in a band that wasn't um, marching band it was concert band so we'd play for doing stuff for like um the plays in the pit oh, down well, below the stage yeah and then we'd also go to badass um uh where we had competitions with other schools so you'd go to their auditorium and play against them Whoa. it was fucking cool what kind of music <sighs> i'd say you know pretty much just that same kind of era stuff that they would be playing when uh -huh. you hear like a marching band. Okay. But um, concert band is what it was called. Yeah. So, I mean, it was all concert band music. Yeah. And like, it was badass because for me, and this this kind of carried through to cross out in my drumming, and I'm not a finesse, I'm not a jazz guy. That's I, I, I can play that way, but it's a totally different style. For me, when I play that way, I use different sticks and I play real light. Um, and then when I play like heavy, hard music, um, I hit as hard as I can. And, <laughs> yeah. and I like to do that. It just feels really good. Um, but then, so when I was doing that, I was all, always upset that I wasn't playing snare or timpani drum or some of the other ones. My drum instructor, or I mean the instructor of the band for all the bands in high school, he wouldn't let me because I didn't do marching band and all the other mm -hmm. ones, but he liked me either way. And he, I liked him a lot. He was really good. His name was Lorenzo. I can't remember his first name, but doc, uh, it was just, you know, Mr. L Lorenzo, but, um, Lorenzen. And, uh, so I was the guy that would hit the cymbals. I was just a cymbal crasher. Oh, yeah. But mm. after mastering that, it's, pretty freaking amazing if you're really good at it believe it or not there's a lot of technique that goes into it and you're it's it's almost harder following the music the whole time yeah and just hitting that one note yeah. you know yeah. what i mean yeah. so i had to be really on it and follow the music the whole time reading the music and then but then when i did it <laughs> fucking hit those fucking things so fucking hard bro and then i was strong and big and i'd hold them out like that oh yeah and what it does is it resonates it's uh, fucking badass dude we, we should do something with that stuff. Okay. seriously like 
with a with a hardcore band have somebody doing just cymbals just on the, the side wow. like that yeah. when they really hit a heavy p- slow part like yeah. a Melvin Z and just oh and then holding it out just it's almost like a gong it's bong, yeah. you know and um whenever we had competitions the people that were doing the, the uh you know that were like other teachers and um they used like I don't know who they'd bring in, but the people that were judges, you know, they were, they knew their stuff. I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, cause you'd hear their comments about different people playing this or that. And they would only comment on, you know, the really good things like, Oh, that, that flutist is exceptional. You can hear, you know, or, but they always had a comment about my symbols. <laughs> <laughs> I used like to that be symbol a... player stands <laughs> out, you know, I was like, actually going to ask you if they, if, they recorded them because I was in the jazz band. I was in junior high, but I played for the high school jazz right, band. Right, And we used to do the same thing, go in those little auditoriums and battle the other schools. Yeah. And then um, yep. and then they would give us the tape, and you can hear the judges. Yes. And one yes. time I fucked yes. up so bad on bass. <laughs> but they were like, oh, and then they're like, oh, he came back really quick. Uh, like Right, corrected it. And then they would sit us in those rooms afterwards, and you couldn't see the music and then it, everything was in a folder and then they would say okay pull out the folder and everybody had like 10 seconds to kind of go over the music and then you had to play that was it oh, same shit. thing yeah wow. same thing Whoa. it was badass and then like mm-hmm. for jazz band like i said i wanted to play in jazz band we only had one person that person played set and that was the what do they call it the drumette guy that's the main drummer for the marching band and he was the dude like mm-hmm. so like yeah, if you weren't that guy, you didn't get to play drum. You didn't get to play in jazz band. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just yeah. one drummer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. yeah. So it was a, it was a, it was cool that we actually had concert band and I could play in that. Yeah. So, so, so and you were saying like you think it translated into like maybe what you've done, what you did in Crossed Out, what like, and you were saying that you were into prog rock, right? Is that what? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Like, dude, so heavily. Because like, when I heard and, the, but way early, like as in like like dude, like when I was in grade school i was mm-hmm. listening to prog yeah. but like for me when i heard the crossed out tape or demo or whatever it's called you know like the cassette it was um it was crazy to like hear like the contrast it's the first because i mean i think maybe you could correct me if i'm wrong i think infest was around like that kind that style of music existed but when you guys did it the brutal parts were more brutal and then the the other parts that had like that were kind of more riffy were like had so much groove you know it was just like almost like surfy kind of and, and then it would just shift like like a hard cut and, and, and i mean maybe that yeah. comes from prog music or i'd, I'd say too because scott was writing a lot of everything and he and i would you know i'd help out but he had a lot of ideas where he'd come in and we're doing this you know and he already knew what he had in mind and i'm like yeah and so whatever he ever came up with i was just like fuck yeah you know but <laughs> yes getting back to that uh you know i he listened to prog too yeah he 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 listened to everything you know it's funny about him is um he first was a real metal head so that was his original thing was a lot of metal but then when i met him he had been listening to hardcore and punk and was way more into that for the last probably 10 years before I'd met him. So, uh-huh. yeah, he was an early metal, um, you know, rock and prog rock guy. When I met him, and not to judge him, but he looked very metal, like right. long, long hair, right. like yeah. looked like a yeah. hasher. Yeah, he comes across yeah. that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was, it was like the, and I mean this in like the best way, but like the sheer absurdity of the way that the songs were structured was just the coolest thing I'd ever heard. But where, like, where do you think that came from? It was it because you were drawing influences from everything? Yes, yes, and that was a thing too. Is like, you know, people say this or that, but like there was so much other shit that we were already listening to back then, you know. And like, dude, I saw Infest uh, when I was in high school. Like, went to Fender's to so a Saturday afternoon show because mm-hmm. it was like three dollars, <laughs> fucking five bands, fucking. Yeah. And we were so stoked to always be able to go up to Long Beach and see a show at fucking Fender. Yeah. So we had heard about it or something and went up there and saw all these fucking, you know, DI and whoever, a bunch of fucking <laughs> punk bands. But I saw Infest and, uh, dude, like back then, could you imagine? Like 
fuck. <laughs> there wasn't anything like that. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, and, and so, yeah, it just blew my mind. And, you know, and then I kind of never really thought about them again really much because I started listening to all these other punk bands and different stuff that was going on. And then, um, well, by that time, I was just trying to put something good together and I'd been playing in a band called Toothless Grin that was more of a blues punk kind of RKL sounding GBH sounding metallic almost like kind of mix weird band and um, we had lost the guitar player and the singer said I know this guy and that was when I met Scott yeah and so we started just writing stuff huh and literally like I had some ideas I was like let's do this and then see what it just literally we didn't really have a style we just like liked so much stuff and I think a lot of stuff, <laughs> I go back and, and think about it and, you know, it sounds a lot like, like some sort of like suicidal tendencies because we did so many covers of those and cover bands and stuff back when I was in other bands. And I don't know. Uh, so like, I would say we had like just a weird oddball style, especially on the, on the, on the, on the demo you can hear it's just all over the place. <laughs> and then we kind of harnessed it, um, and I and I and I would say it was a big part of it was Scott, mm. yeah, like just had all these really good ideas. So it was you know I I'd help him write, but for the most part he he knew where we were going with mm. all the songs. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And and the writing though he you know we all knew where the lyrics were were gonna where they could go and be good, but that was the toughest part too was. Uh, I I would get frustrated because it, it'd be like no man we got to write something better than that like mm. we'd have good like vocals and this it is just, like it just seemed like it wasn't enough sometimes I'd be like oh let's word it this way or you mm-hmm. know change is it this a with better. Dallas you mean just with the whole band we'd sit down Scott Dallas and I uh huh huh yeah because that uh, that was also an interesting thing too is like there was almost this sense of minimalism with the lyrics there was just very very few words right which says a lot it's the whole like mingus thing it's like the notes that aren't there are are saying stuff too you know so, yeah I mean, you know, yeah to, to me that was a, a a big um lyrical influence influential move like oh shit you can just say a couple lines and yeah. just be like yeah and leave it at that and 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 let the music do the talking kind but of but you're saying like you, you know. thought it could have been better at times no or? i just i think everything came out great the way it came out it was just there were certain things that we all put little pieces in um you know i don't want to just say that scott wrote and did everything that's oh. more or less what i wanted to get at but he was a great guy fucking huge influence of the band um we wouldn't have done any of the things we did without him mm. mm-hmm. and because he also you got to remember back then there wasn't an internet yeah mm-hmm. so he had already been writing letters to tris dodge mm-hmm been in conversations with him multiple times calling here and there once in a while to talk to him hey you know we are doing this or that and um you know we played a couple of shows and sent our demo and we got to be on slap of ham and it's just like oh my god like, yeah so uh because of scott and yeah. and he knew so many other really cool people with great mm. record labels like yourself mm. and you know stuff like that so it's just it's like wow this is a freaking just being introduced to that whole genre is a different thing and you know it, it it's it's still something i think that's uh great but just different now because like the internet like i yeah. said back then you really had nothing yeah and it was the, amazing that these people did what they did sure yeah. and the only way to experience it was to see it or hear it in person yeah i mean for me like and you know there's and no offense to the bands but it was always like almost every show at the che was like had crossed out or had heroin or you know tit ranch or whatever like you know it's like the kind of played a lot of the shows and so it was so people are always tripping out like you've seen crossed out like 30 times i'm like yeah i mean it was just they were like always playing it was Mm -hmm. fucking always awesome though it was never like a a disappointment or a letdown where like there's been a lot of you know you see a lot of shit and you're just like this is not yeah there's a reason why i think those bands were always playing you know uh, what's a trip too is when i was in that band toothless grin we practiced in that in this place in lucadia 
So that's why we were a Lucadian labeled band pretty much. It, um, and then it was the same place Manifest Destiny practiced, mm -hmm. Toothless Grin had practiced there, and we'd played sh shows in that place with heroin. Whoa. Yeah, and then Toothless Grin went away, crossed out, came uh, became a band, mm -hmm. and then played shows with heroin again. Mm -hmm. Like Matt, early heroin because it yeah. changed a lot. With yeah, everybody. but it was Matt and, and Scott. Yeah, yeah, that I remember. And Matt was drumming, I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's crazy too because so at some point, and maybe you maybe you know when this, or maybe it wasn't even conscious, but like I I feel like the demo happened and it was pretty brutal. It had that um that that like sample where the guy says you fuck your own mom for a nickel which yeah. was which was super brutal i don't know what that's from but it but once the first seven inch came out it like went to me like when you when you talk about like and i'm using air quotes but like when you talk about like brutal music you know there's one element of it but like that really defined it like it was so fucking it like made it made like you know, spooky metal bands seem even like even cheesier than they already. It was just like, dude, there's you can't get any more closer to becoming like a musical serial killer than that fucking first seven inch. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, that's the thing is, we were all, I don't know. It, it, I, I grew up with metal and and uh, punk rock, and I had a great friend named Brent. Um, still hang out with one of my best friends, Brent, and uh, he was the metal guy in school. He was the, he knew everything and was the, the man to talk to about metal. And um, I was way into punk, and one of my best friends that I hung out with that was just gnarly punker guy, fucking so great, greatest guy ever. Um, but just gnarly, <laughs> gnarly guy. I mean, he there's videos if you go back and look at like GRI fucking footage on youtube he's the one bouncing off the stage 20 times you oh, know yeah. just fucking gnarly guy and so full of life and um he got killed in a in a in a car accident and then so the guy brent and me we weren't we knew each other but but when he died i said hey we got to be mm. close now because mm -hmm. i missed him so much mm -hmm. so yeah uh it was just one of those things where it's like, ever since then, though, we've been best friends. And uh, so I, I learned all my metal from him, mm -hmm. and I taught a lot of punk rock to him. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. So we exchanged a lot of stuff, and it was cool. But when you bring up that fact that, like, yeah, you know, some of the metal stuff wasn't as mean. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, it's weird, even to this day. I mean, there, there's stuff out there that I think that's hardcore that's mm -hmm. so much more harder and mm. meaner than a lot of metal out there. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but it's weird because, and I don't mean to diss Infest, but like Infest like had a lot of positivity at the lyrics and it kind of, and, and, you know, even the vocals are just a little kind of funnier you know like it wasn't as like threatening yeah but when you yeah, would yeah. see when i saw you guys i was like this is fucked like this is some seriously frightening shit and i and i talk i would you know i would talk to dallas like off stage but like yeah. his presence and yours were fucking frightening yeah we were pissed off and we'd get into it on stage for sure yeah and you know i mean uh you gotta give you know uh, yeah it's just you know it's a different world and and, and that's the thing like you know, when we were getting ready to, uh, uh, I think we were when we were recording the seven, the first seven, I think it was, or it was either the the second was the split with I Hate God. Um, I can't remember if it was one of those or the, it was one of the other, but I'm I'm gonna say it was the the first seven and and um, Eric from I Hate or from a uh, Man's a Bastard had. The singer from I Hate God had, had like paid for him to come out. I think he paid like his bus fare or something mm -hmm. and was supposed to do some tracks with them. And like, so I bring that up when you start talking about like brutal, heavy, you know, Man's a Bastard or I Hate mm -hmm. God vocals and stuff, you know? Um, yeah, I'm all about all that. Yeah. You know, that's just so fucking great. And when you hear something like that, you know, uh, it's just different, you know? It's not like, and this is the weird thing. I mean, when you listen to like metal and 
and I, and I got to give metal it's, it's credit where it is or whatever, you know, but I was never into really metal that much. But now I'm way, I have a lot of love for certain metals. Uh, <laughs> the vocals, man. Yeah. Is someone really going to scream like that if they're like pissed off or uh, something? They're yeah. going to go, ah! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they really do. Like some of them, they just scream so high pitch. You're mm. just like, whoa. Yeah. You know? Um, where where did that come from? Yeah. Like why? What, what was it? But then you look at like, and then I go back and I go, fuck, you know? Some of the raddest shit is like fucking James Brown and the <laughs> fucking highest pitch fucking scream you've yeah. ever heard, mm -hmm. like a whistle coming through his throat. Yeah. And you're just like, fuck. Yeah. How rad is that? You know? And so maybe it was somewhere in between. It, Dio. it came in. I yeah. I mean, Dio, Dio Judas Priest, yeah, fucking yeah. both had really high vocal. Yeah, Bruce yeah. Dickinson and, was. But yeah, it's, it's a trip, dude. And, um, if you just weren't into that, you just don't get it yeah. at the time. You know what I mean? And I was there and didn't like it at the time. But now <laughs> I look back and I understand because my friend was a metaler. And like I said, so Brent helps me out and says, oh, no, you just don't get that, you know, error or whatever was going on. And, yeah, and then I look back and I go, okay, yeah, you know, Dio came from fucking this and did that. And he played rainbow. with Sabbath. And yeah. you got to remember Sabbath, yeah. and, you know, which goes back to fucking everything, you know. Funny yeah. how metal heads are so fucking dedicated to metal, like they yeah. are, like they <laughs> right. are an encyclopedia. Like right. Just... Oh, my friend Brent knows. Yeah. You know, he's not. He's not into the into the newer metal so much. Uh, since since crossed out, I think he became more into a little bit more of the hardcore, and then he really got into stone rock. Mm -hmm. And so I listened to stone rock too, and. Um, I think some of that shit's great too. Yeah, me too. I think like you know, like honestly, like I'll go see I Hate God anytime they come through mm -hmm. because I just I I just love how brutal they are. I um, think I Hate God was um, the backing band for um, Vanilla Ice's like metal metal record. No way. I'm pretty wow. sure it's I Hate God. I could be wrong. That's crazy. Someone can like listen to this can correct us, but. Um, yeah, those guys have a lot of different stuff going on too. I know, that, you look. know, the the guitar <laughs> player plays drums in in another band and stuff. Too. Yeah, it, it, it is crazy though because you know, bringing up like metal and punk and hardcore and like <clears throat> the stuff that's I don't know, like just the sheer brutality of what Crossed Out achieved. And I'm assuming like it maybe and it's always in hindsight where you're like oh fuck we did that you know like when yeah. it's happening you're just like whatever this is just happening and then all yeah. of a sudden it's like the thing kind of like how you said like what crossed out has become to people today yeah because i i mean i i meet a lot of people i i tour all the time and i meet a lot of people that and crossed out comes up like oh you're from san diego or something will come up and, and they'll talk about it and um well, you guys covered a crossed out song in locust too yeah but I, but I, but even with that i don't think anyone like i don't know it brings feel, it up I, because of that i feel like most people don't even know that's a fucking cover you know like no one reads right. the liner notes or whatever right. and it, we made it sound a little different weird uh, yeah. yeah um but i think like when it comes up and um you know people bring up the the band i i they're they're always like kind of amazed like oh you like you saw them that many times or they were, they were just around and it, be, it became like this sort of like, you guys are like mysterious or, or, or something like this fucking unicorn or something, you know, Dude, <laughs> like, that's what it was for us too. Like there were certain bands you could never see, you know, and you're just like, fuck man. And you know, um, I think that was one of the reasons why we didn't, I don't know. Um, you never toured, right? We, we did just the two shows in, up in San Francisco at Berkeley yeah, at um, uh, Gilman. Gilman, yeah. Yeah. That's so Yeah, crazy. two times we played up there, and that was it. We were supposed to do a couple shows in Arizona a couple times that we just were like, yeah. And I don't know. I just probably wasn't feeling into it that at that time or something. Didn't want to go do that show. Um, you know, it's weird. And it wasn't ever like a time where I wasn't like, hey, yeah, let's go on tour. I always wanted to tour super bad. Um it just never fucking panned out, mm. you know? And then we always had issues with uh, Rich, the bass player. He's a great, great friend of mine. Um, we kind of started the band. Mm. Rich and I were playing in bands, and it led up to Crossed Out. Mm -hmm. um, and then just he, you know, it wasn't so much that we had problems with him as much as 
it was it was it was he was just at the time where you know I, I don't want to be responsible for a band and have to like you know commit and mm -hmm. just have to be there or whatever i just want to go do other things mm -hmm. and not have to think about it and i said dude i don't blame you like that's that's totally understandable like he had he had been surfing and just surfing really hard and got into like surfing to where he actually he like won like a pro contest or something oh. at trestles mm, that's whoa yeah, he, holy like, shit blow my mind yeah. like got really good yeah. you know and i was just like wow uh yeah that's so, so much the opposite than having to go set up and sound check <laughs> and then wait for three right, hours. Yeah, and, right. And, um, uh, but yeah. then, you know, like, and then he's the one that approached me to come back and play with me. He had a couple bands going. Well, he had a band going and he said, Hey, it's not cool that, you know, we're not playing anymore. We should be playing still and we need a drummer. Will you come play drums for us? And their band was, um, called Lazy Cobra and, 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 I was okay with the music, but it was just like a kind of a hard rock band, mm. and it wasn't my something that I would write at all. Mm. It sounded like a Lazy Cobra. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. anyways, um, so when we started playing, I just wanted to really play the stuff I wanted to play and started writing a bunch of songs with the guys uh -huh. and changed the name, and it became Captain Howdy. And uh -oh. And we put out a EP, and we st we were ready to do an LP, and then who put the e who released the EP? We just put it on. Um, you know, it's funny is we we're getting ready to do something or another. We had this tape, went in the studio, and Jesse from um, Escuela Grind. Oh. I got a hold of him through someone else, and he asked if we could headline the One Fest. Uh -huh. And we we're like, "Well, yeah, we, we we're into playing. No one really knows us for a headliner, and but we'll do it, you yeah. know." And then um, a couple months went by, and it'd been like you know three months. It, the show was coming up in like three months, and like after a month and a half or something, he got a hold of me again. Hey, we're, we're gonna have uh, I hate God. You guys are gonna co. I'm like whatever like like we're not co anything fucking i hate god's fucking way bigger better band or whatever you know so we were like just super excited the guys in my band that was their favorite band like mm -hmm. rich and rod and even the guitar player lane that was their favorite band mm -hmm. so like to play with them they were just like mm. giddy you know just couldn't be any more happy and then we were still playing on and off and then they started another side band and it sounded exactly like I hate God. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Um, so you, what, let's talk about Eric Wood for a minute. Yeah. That dude's a maniac. <laughs> he is. He's so rad. Oh my God. I haven't um, really hung with him in a long time. Yeah. Um, I spoke with him here and there, like through Facebook or something. Um, and the last time I actually hung out with him, believe it or not, we were at Aaron's house and we were all smoking weed. Oh. Yeah. Aaron. Um, Kenyon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I thought that. So was that like kind of in recent times or? Because um, they had like fallen out for a minute. They there. did, but they they never really like they still talked and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it's weird because, you know. I don't know what the real deal is between all those guys because Bastard Noise still plays too, which is Henry. No. Oh, Bastard Noise. Yeah. 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 Just Wood by himself. Yeah. But yeah. then they had, yeah. And that's what He'll the thing is. That's with... what's weird about that is because yeah. now it's just him by himself doing yeah. noise, but yeah. it used to be him and Joel and Henry. Yeah. Yeah. But so your bass, so the crossout bass player bailed. Rich. And then you got Matt. Matt for a little while filled in. Mm hmm. And we were still trying to find someone like, like Matt was great. It just, it just didn't feel like someone that we wanted to keep there all the time. And I don't think that he was, you know, it was more of a thing where he just was filling in until we got someone. Mm -hmm. And then we got Eric to, to do it for a while. And it just. That was it, right? Yeah. yeah. Nothing ever was as good as Rich. Huh. We really loved Rich. He was really great on the bass yeah. and fun to be with. And, uh. It was just a bummer, like, you know, um, you know, and, 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 uh, to seem like 
even when we look back, it's it's still one of those things. It's like, I don't know. It would be tough to even fill those shoes still. I don't know why. Mm. Yeah. It'd be weird. I mean, Eric has a very specific sound and right. style. And yeah, that was a weird thing too, presence. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, okay, so uh, I, what, I don't want to rate your um, stuff, but like that split with crossed out, split. What you did? There was a Man as a Bastard and then Drop Dead. That was it. You said there was a I Hate God one. You, no. Yeah. So he came to the, that was, I never finished the story. Oh. What I was saying, what brought that up was just the, the, the harshness of vocals versus like metal vocals versus like oh. hardcore vocals and stuff. But like, you know, I had to bring him into it cause like he, he's, he's got a different vocal style too. And, and then like they Wait, brought so him he out, rec- he recorded on your, they brought him out to do vocals on, on man's a bastard stuff. Oh, okay. And then freaking, um, we hung out with him. We were all in the studio working, doing all the crossed out stuff, but he was there and guys from as a bastard were there. We're all hanging out. Cause really that dude had really nowhere to go. He had to stay at like Eric's house. Eric, you know, yeah. didn't put him up in a hotel or yeah. whatever. He was just supposed to hang out for a couple of days, do some tracks and then bail. Well, we were there the one day and then man as a bastard was supposed to record, I think that night and the next day or something. And then he, he bailed and didn't do any tracks with him. Wow. Yeah. Totally like kind of, it was, it wasn't that big of a deal. Like he just kind of burned Eric, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, more than anything. But that yeah. was the one where you, there's the sample from, um, the Planet of the Apes, right? Yes. That was like yes. the most brutal thing I'd ever heard. And you know, what's funny though too, is, uh, I really would like to have heard what that would have came out like sounding like the mix of having that vocal on man's a bastard stuff. Could you imagine some oh, of that? Uh, the, I hate God yeah, vocal. Uh-huh. It'd just be different. You yeah. Know? But yeah. Yep. That was the one with the, the, then, uh, um, planet of the apes and, um, it was good shit. So then why'd the band stop just life? We were playing and playing and then had issues with the fact that, like I said, I think more, more or less just I got mad at the fact that we didn't have Rich still on, on bass anymore. And um, we got t- I got tired of just dealing with not having a bass player. Yeah. And it was just like, hey, man, we we just don't sound the same without Rich. And we've tried and tried and tried, and it's just not working. Huh. And then, um, so yeah, just I just pretty much threw in the towel. It, it was it was sad because like I really loved doing it but it just was kind of here and there it wasn't like I wanted it to be I wanted it to be more on than just playing live and not playing shows everywhere all the time and you know it's just too many weird things going on you know uh, Scott didn't want to play on a stage mm. uh, I don't think it was something that was for him mm-hmm. I think he's one of those people that's really into it and likes to write and play the music live but not really in front of people so much. Mm-hmm. I think it's, and, and I and I totally dig that. Like, I think it's cool that like people could just do studio records and put them out and it sound badass. Like his and my favorite band's Rudimentary Peni. Mm-hmm. And fucking, so like you listen to that band and they're not playing live, you know? They yeah. played a few shows back in the day, but they're putting out badass shit still. I know. Yeah. So where's the new crossed out right? record? <laughs> right, right. Hey, don't, don't, don't count us out still. I mean, I still talk to Scott all the time. Yeah. And um, I've always said, hey, you know, you're welcome to come over and jam. And I have a office in my house. And my wife works in the office now from home. But um, I've always had that office for me to use for stuff to work on and computers and whatever if I have to do something. But And for her, too. But then in the office is my drums and mm-hmm. bass and guitar. I buy all that stuff because I like it. Yeah. And... Um, so it's there, and I and I always tell him, "Hey, come over. We, we'll jam. We'll we'll come over, and we'll we'll play like some funk or something." You know? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I had a full on funk band uh-huh. for a while with Rich too. Uh, after Crossed Out. Whoa. Yeah. It was fucking amazing. We played at the fair, a fucking bunch of times. <laughs> the weirdest thing is we we played at the fair one time, and we kind of, it doesn't make any sense how they kind of put bands together there or whatever, but we. 
the band Cage came on after us or something? Oh. Or like some metal band? Yeah, like a hardcore, straight edge hardcore. Metal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super weird. Yeah. Like, it was just like, whoa. Huh. But yeah, we had one night, um, we were playing there and like Stone Temple Pilots was playing on the main stage and mm. we were still playing after they got done and all the people came out and watched us, which yeah. was cool. Yeah. Yeah, and we had like, since it was funk too, there's like a bunch of kids playing break dancing and wow, shit cool. while we were playing we were just like that's badass yeah. it was it was fun and if they only knew what you guys uh, yeah <laughs> right yeah and i think like the that was the thing too is like we started out as trying to be like real jazzy funk because at that time dude san diego had the fucking sickest scene going for funk bands and it was a lot of them were going on mm. there was a lot of funk bands so like what was this 90 90- Four, three, maybe? Yeah, uh, 95, 96, okay. 97, 90. Because, uh, I don't know, uh, did you ever hear Grey Boy All-Stars before? Yeah. So when they came out on the scene and there was uh, B-side players yeah. always playing with them and um, there was just so many bands at that time that we were checking out that were from this area that mm. were doing rad mm. funk stuff that mm. we were just so pumped on. And um, like I said, like, Scott and Rich and I, we were always into like you know funky stuff. Wait, like, the funk band was the three of you? No, like uh, but we was... always jammed. Uh, Scott would jam oh, with yeah. us. <laughs> the band was just Rich and I, and we'd have different people come in and play different pl- parts. Uh. Like Rich would play guitar sometimes, mostly bass and drums. We laid down like probably two LPs worth, like probably like I want to say fifteen songs wow. at one point or another, and just put them all on like. A, a double CDs like uh-huh. two CDs and um, yeah I never really put it out though yeah. we just played shows and and it was fun It'd be so sick to do a secret crossed out record that's only funk <laughs> <laughs> just that'd be hilarious just fuck the whole world up right um, well you know what's funny dude is I don't understand it either still to this day is what's up with that other crossed out band yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know either. Yeah. I've never even looked into it either. But, but there I was just... an, there was another one before you guys though too. Was there? Yeah, because I remember they played like, uh, at, like Soma or something. Really? Yeah, like right when you guys, like, I, I, I went to see you and it was a different band or something. Wow. Yeah, it was weird. And then isn't one of them's like a religious band or something? I think. Yeah. <laughs> And that I've heard be, yeah. stuff where I've gone on YouTube to look at the other ones because I'll try to show something. I'll look something up on an old crossed out footage or something, and I'll look that up and I'll see this other band. They're in a church. And you'll see, yeah, or you'll see them playing, and, and it's like you'll see some comments about, you know, some stuff that they like or the people that like them like, and then you'll see someone going, what the fuck are you guys doing with this name? You guys <laughs> yeah, fucking... yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're just yeah. like, whoa. yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's a trip that like there's uh, you know, that's that name game again. Yeah. Getting back to the name game, man. It just sucks. So earlier when we were talking about, talking about names, what what is your what are your thoughts on it? I I always thought like crossed out sounded straight edge. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, what was it ever right? that? No. No, yeah. no. Not at yeah. all. And that's the thing. We were never ever ever into straight edge whatsoever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you think about it, yeah. right in that era and stuff, and like guys put a cross on their hand and go to the show, yeah, and they were straight edge, right? Out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's kind of trippy. And Dallas and Scott came up with a name and just liked it, and they're like, you know what? It just it, they just thought it was a a good name, and I was like, you know what? Um, I I don't think it's a bad name. It's definitely different. So I was like, okay, you know, yeah. Um, and Rich. Rich, you know, he he kind of just thought, well, you know, we'll see how it goes, kind of situation. And it's it's you know like it makes you wonder, like you know, was uh, you know, some of the bands you've heard actually were other names, and then like like they come out with like the real name later, and then you're that's the actual name that you've heard of or whatever. But like uh, like the band The Accused, yeah, they were like the Farts. No, before, yeah, before they no. were the wait, they were. The- because the farts was Duff from GNR and all that shit, in LA, and the accuser from Seattle. Yeah, same but, band. But no, different band probably. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wait, I don't understand what you're saying. Before the accused was the accused. Oh, they, they were, were the called farts. the farts as yes. well. Different. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. So I mean, like you know, sometimes you go, okay, we'll go by that for now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then maybe we'll come up with something better. 
Yeah. Now there's the accused AD, which I guess was with Slayer Hippie. Yeah. Which was rad, but now he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad I got to hang with that dude before he passed, man. Yeah. He the... was just a really big influence, mm. great drummer. But they, I think they changed to AD with the new singer. No, it was the same original singer. Um, the bass player that played bass for him mm-hmm. played guitar. So huh. it was just those two dudes. And oh, yeah. Only two original dudes. Huh. That was one of the most uh, uh, very influential band for me when I was a kid because of skate rock and oh stuff god, like that. Yeah. the accused yeah great is the greatest thrash metal band yeah the singing is just, just brutal fucking insane yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah um yeah I wish I would have saw like my friend saw him back in the day um two of my best friends uh, that I grew up with that really turned me on to punk rock was my friend Lee and my friend Sean that I play with now and. Um, they got to see him mm. and I didn't get, I was, it was weird. Like I was a year younger than them, but we mm. all were in the same class in school or whatever. Mm. But I was like, had the late birthday, man. And there was so many shows I didn't get to go yeah. see. It sucks. So how old are you? So I'll be 55 this year. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize. Wow. So you got a, a few years older than me. I, I, I'm, I didn't know that. Yeah. So well, what about the rest of the guys I'm, that crossed out? I'm 54, but in October I'll be yeah. 55. Um, Scott was like a year younger, and uh, Rich was a year younger, and Dallas I think was like two or three years younger. Uh, wild. Yeah. So you got to see some crazy shit because mm-hmm. I always kind of I I mean I I think I was like thirteen or fourteen when I saw Crossed Out. Wow. Or fourteen maybe. Wow. Right before I started playing and 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 struggle and struggle yeah, yeah. and it, but it was like. Um, I just remember like people that were a little bit older were able to go to clubs that were 18 or 21 and yeah dude, out a lot it of shit. sucked because like you know you're 20 and you can't get into a fucking 21 up show and you don't give a shit about I'm drinking beer if I want to anyway yeah you know, yeah I'm smoking yeah. weed taking acid shit yeah. heroin what the f- you know like <laughs> come on who yeah. gives a fuck and then and then you know not that I do that but you know that's the thing it's like you can get away with anything at that age still and they but you can't get into a fucking show yeah and uh it was uh, the Spirit Club. Oh, yeah. Like, there was so many fucking shows. They had I all kinds of great shit Fuck, there. Fuck, man. Yeah. Uh, Killdozer. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. F- f- didn't get to see them. Yeah. Wish I would have saw them. Um, not that they're, they're probably still out touring or something. I don't know. But back in the day, it was one of those ones you wanted to see. You yeah. Know? They were the, and it was hot, too. Uh, they came out, and Chromax had just come on the scene. And they came out and fucking opened with like uh, I didn't see it, but my friend told me they came out with uh, opened with uh, we got a no from fucking Chrome. Oh yeah, <laughs> just that rad intro. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Um, I saw Gigi Allen at the Spirit from the outside. Uh, wow. I'm glad I didn't get inside for that one. It only right. lasted four minutes, but that's the best way you want to see Gigi <laughs> Allen, right? <laughs> I think I would have been in the same shoes as you. Yeah. Um. But I wish I would have saw him. Yeah. At least you got to say you saw him. I just I just saw him get thrown out of the venue and then just like this gnarly fight. Chaos. Like, yeah. And then I, everything. That's what I've heard yeah. at every show yeah. pretty much. It was like pretty quick. And then uh, you know what's funny about that guy is it all, you know, during Crossed Out he was playing and stuff and we were like, oh, this and that. He's just going to fucking pull out a gun and shoot everyone and then blow his brains out or something weird. And we're just like, hey, I don't know. I don't know about that guy. And then uh, now I go back and there's like, I played in this band with this dude, uh, Gordo from Oceanside, and um, it was a really fucking amazing skate punk band. It's called the Embalmers, uh-huh. and um, we had a lot of fun. And he kind of taught me some stuff about punk rock that you know everyone learns lessons to this day. They're about old school bands and different things, and you know, back playing in that band like we'd we'd play shows and just you just you know you just learn so much along the way playing out and then and that's one of those things it's like in all the bands i played with i played in a lot and and it and it's good to have that experience you know what i mean you're never to be out on stages and stuff and playing and and it's it's just a really good thing but uh it's just funny how it goes with the with the uh the different the different things that can happen along the way and 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 playing with things different people and stuff and i learned 
some people have different preferences about you know the way that you play even on the drums versus a hi-hat or a ride or something like that and a lot of times you, most people don't in the audience don't know you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, yeah i don't know it's it's, yeah. it's a weird situation you know but yeah i, I don't know where i was going with that i kind of got off track yeah you were talking about Gigi for a minute oh so Gigi. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I got carried, up, carried away. Like, Gigi, I never got to see him, but he has this fucking one really great song, and I'm sure there's a few other ones, but, uh, yeah. Like playing drums, you mean? No, no, no. Like, Singing. Like, just, fuck, dude. Like, I have punk rock songs to me that are, like, punk rock hits, I guess. Yeah. And everyone knows all the hits of, like, certain bands but Gigi's like all over the place it's pretty bad but there's though. one fucking album or one song yeah. I've heard yeah. that's just fucking really good and that guy from Embalmers showed it to me he's like yeah. here check out this song something about girl 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 give me give me give me good head have you ever heard that song <laughs> yeah I don't know they're all so like, but yeah. yeah it's fucking great song yeah yeah and I never really know, knew that the guy had anything that was fucking worth a damn as far as music. I just yeah. thought he was just a spectacle, pretty much. I mean, he kind of was, but... Right? Yeah. Well, right. I mean, that's what he's famous for. But then you go back and go, hey, you know what? There was a, a fucking really good song. And yeah. And one I really like. Well, they're making that film about him. I think like uh, like a Hollywood blockbuster movie about, about like a... Like not a documentary, like a film, film about. Yeah, there's him. a big actor playing him. Yeah, right? it's like. Um, I could see that because he was such a spectacle. Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it, it's. Be great. I think it'll be interesting. I think it's mm -hmm. cool that it'll exist. But um, but going back to like the technique thing, I remember because when I first started playing music and struggle, Jose Palafox, the drummer, was um, he was he played for the Mission Bay um, Dixieland band, which is kind of funny because Dixieland's pretty like racist shitty kind of like not the best um like he was really into like real good jazz but he played in this like dixieland jazz band yeah so anyhow it was i think he was just wanted to play music and stuff but like and not to go on a jose tangent but when i first met him he played for this um this is kind of wild i live a block like a couple of blocks from this place now this church that was an all black and and he said it was a gay church as well, which I I didn't know like existed in like ninety one or something. But he played drums for this church band, and I went to see them play once, and it was definitely all black. I don't know if they were gay, but um, regardless, it was wild. But the band was him and, uh, on guitar, and the guitar player I forever thought it was Scott from Cross Oh Down. wow! But it was like this long hair, like white metal dude. I don't I don't think it was, but um, right. The band was definitely not like part of the church congregation, you know. I was like, well, yeah. this is a trip, but Rick, that doesn't matter. So the point was, I remember when we first started playing music and playing playing shows, and occasionally with Crossed Out, he, I would always observe him um, just fully fixated on the drummer, you and and whatever band we were watching. He, and and I and I was always like, wow, like you're you're not like in it, you know, you're not like experiencing it, and you know, I was like naively punk rock and i thought you should just mosh or slam dance or do the thing but he's like no i want to like learn like right, stuff you right know? and i was like fuck that's so cool and uh and i and i i started paying attention and i think it was like really nice to like have not that he was trying to point that out to me i observed it and i and i uh, uh embraced it you know that's but awesome then i started but yeah like now I'll, I'll constantly just i'm fixated on drummers all the time but i will always watch the performers performing it's in a different way now for you it's instead so much of just more, being the guy slam dancing to the music there's so much more information i can i appreciate people letting loose and especially when no, you're playing a show you great. need that to happen right you, you want it's that it's great if everyone's just like you know studying you like what it's, the fuck's it's kind of weird yeah. right <laughs> but uh that'll, but yeah you know. no dude like and 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 I agree with you so much that like, I I'm I'm either sometimes that guy jumping in the pit just to slam around and have fun or whatever, but I fucking study the fuck out of people. Uh, when I was you know learning coming up, one of the shows that really hits on a point was this band um, SNFU. I don't know oh, if yeah. you fucking one point dude. They were just so fucking violent and just the drummer was so good. It was um the album better than a stick in the eye yeah and fuck man they were so firing dude and just so fucking fast and sounded so good huh. and watching that drummer was that way for me yeah. and then you know a lot of drummers of course but yeah it was very influential watching some of these people play and learning and learning and learning but maybe it goes back to your symbol <clears throat> you know 
know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you had this technique where you would like raise it and you did a thing without even really knowing that you were creating this technique or utilizing. Well, you know, honest, no, you know, let's, let's back up. Cause the guy that, um, was the teacher told me to do that, uh. but maybe not as gnarly as I did it. Like in you, my mind, you hit him and you hold sound, your, right? yeah, you hit him yeah. and hold your your hands out like that so that it goes out. But I think I was just on another level. Man. Um, in was, my mind, I feel like I'm I'm thinking this, and you could correct me, correct me if I'm wrong because you did it. But I feel like it would have been more like theatrical as well. Yes, and like because you were like into cool shit, you know, you're yeah. just like fuck and whatever, yeah, like the thing, yeah. Where like most of you were just probably like raise it, but yeah. you were like doing i don't know i've seen you play a lot of yeah. shows like i know that you're have that that style the, like the energy yeah. is happening yep you're in it definitely also the anticipation and the tension where you're like waiting to hit the fucking symbols oh. you know like, so it just made yeah. it even more so yeah. <laughs> and it was just made for me man i mean wow. that's the weirdest thing that like crossed out came along and honestly i feel like the music was just written so well for the drums for me. Oh yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Scott knew he wasn't gonna get away with some crazy, amazing jazz drummer stuff or something that mm. that I wasn't. I, I was a I was a Neanderthal drummer. <laughs> yeah, w which is a, such a great way to put it. And and I yeah. think a Neanderthal drummer is like, uh, it sounds it sounds like a, a negative thing, but fucking a man, no. it was so informative and so. In, um, it, inspirational to see that shit happen like Red. it felt fucking crazy to watch you play that's awesome and 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 the again like this year absurdity where you're just like blasting and then you're going into like this weird groove for like two bars and then back to the blast you know yeah yeah um, and just you know uh some some cool heaviness to it especially which i really love the the heavy stops and stuff that we did um and then, like you said, yeah, the bitch and grooves that Scott would write, you know. Um, Full on tension, though. The whole thing was right? like tense. Right. Which is what it is achieving. We wanted right? to come off like an explosion. It definitely did. Yeah. Um, so with all of that being said, and, and, and I, I would say like when right before the Locust started, um, our original drummer, Dave Astor, whose dad was in Battalion of Saints, so he's got like crazy history and, wow. and and Bobby, the guitar player, wanted to start this band that sounded like Crossed Out. And so they just like, they were like still in high school at the time. I just, I was one year older than Bobby in high school, so I had already graduated. And they were like wasted and they were walking around Hillcrest looking for people, asking like whoever. And this is like when Off the Record was over there and there was like, you know, like punks would be hanging out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, we want to start a band like Crossed Out. You know, you want to start and like yeah. asking like random drunk people. Yeah. And they ran into hmm. um, Aaron from um, uh, the guitar player for Antioch Arrow. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that band, but he, he asked them. They're like, oh, he's an Antioch Arrow. Let's ask him. Rad. And he's like, no, I don't want to do it. I play guitar. But my roommate, which was. I was his roommate. It was like, my roommate really likes Crossed Out. He'd want to do it. And so they're like, he's like, oh, it's it's JP from Struggle. And they're like, oh, man. Like, that <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and then, uh, but like jokingly, you know, oh. because they thought like, uh, they wanted to just be like real, real brutal, you know. And, yeah. I, and I had already like started singing in this band Swing Kids. And like, they thought I was like getting soft or like not into like the, the brutal shit. Isn't it funny? Like, that's the thing. Like, dude, like I had a funk band that I was singing. Mm -hmm. Like, I I wrote all the vocals and sang half of it with Rich, bro. And <laughs> yeah. it's all like, dude, all like kind of just jingle shit. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, but doesn't mean I can't fucking be playing a fucking fierce band. You need the, the same day the in contrast. another, in, a, yeah. in another band. But the yeah. contrast or, helps, I think, brighten each side, you know? Like, yeah, I, absolutely. Totally. And why not, dude? Like I could see a reggae artist being a punk rock artist also. Look yeah. at Bad Brains, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's it it is interesting to like think about that, but you you I, I, and I know like you're very humble about what you've accomplished, and I just want to say thanks because what what you were part of was hugely influential to so many people, myself included. So well, I thank you because you were there with me doing it in struggle, <laughs> playing so shows with us, and uh -huh. I and I fucking love the stuff you've done, and. Uh, so yeah, I you mm -hmm. know it's 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 a big it's a big good thing that we're all here doing what we can do and fucking a you know let's let's keep fucking making good shit happen. <laughs> Hopefully, you know? we can. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like, 
Um, the funk crossed out record. That's gonna be so yeah. Sick. I mean, who knows? You know, like I said, you never know, <laughs> dude. Funk you out. never know. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna say <laughs> it's not gonna happen because we do hang out and we talk. He's uh, Scott's a contractor. He's so fucking busy, bro, that he comes home and dies until he wakes up in the morning and fucking does it again. Ugh. Yeah, he works construction, um, and then uh, you know, I don't know. Dallas is doing his thing. I I don't really talk to him and. I don't know as far as the relationships go, as far as with mm-hmm. uh, with those two, but um, uh, Rich and I still hang out and talk. But he works construction too, mm-hmm. and like that's one of the things for him. Like he literally, when they were playing in that band, when right after Captain Howdy, he had a band, and he literally just up and moved and said it's not enough fucking work here, and went to Oregon. And and a friend of his had a farm up there, and he worked mm-hmm. on the farm literally got to the point where they did so well that they were, he bought like a new tractor and shit mm. the next year and was mm. just like farming for like five years up there wow. and then he moved back down here recently again like in the last year wow. yeah so I mean it's just it's weird how stuff goes you know but yeah even even how people do bring it up like it, the fact that it existed and what you guys did t- changed the trajectory of I think whatever genre you we want to call it whatever like that style it influenced generations of of musicians so it's it's pretty rad so it is rad yeah. and and i was super you know blessed to be a fucking part of that man i i i'll tell you i just happened to be at the right place at the right time um you know we were all into the punk scene so heavily dude that it was sad to us because scott and and dallas and i would talk about those old days of seeing shows with thousands of kids at like you know you'd go up to like uh la at the, like you know um fenders or some of those you know yeah. bigger bigger sh- places um and you just see these huge shows with fucking thousands of kids you're like what happened to that yeah. shit man like we wanted to get that yeah you know, we wanted to get out and play big shows it's just and then by the time we were getting to that point we just kind of fizzled out too yeah you know? i mean just if you guys did it, it would be thousands and thousands of people. People right. would fucking freak out. Yeah. It's like that Drive Like Jehu show. Did you see that? Yeah. That was some wild ass shit. Yeah. There was 4,000 people and they played fucking four songs. Yeah. It was the best thing. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan. You know, Rick and I were best friends growing up. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. We grew up at, yeah, went same, to school yeah, together. Yeah. I love we him like, too. Yeah. We were super close. I think, I mean, I like and Hot Snakes and everything he's done, but yeah. like Jehu was the shit. Oh, yeah. Jehu's the best. Yeah. Pitchfork. I know Pitchfork was great, Pitchfork. but Jehu and then yeah, but yeah, yeah, Jehu was the best. I agree. And then uh, you know it's funny, um, but honestly, where it all came from was, and I was going to bring this up earlier when you were talking about weird bands and stuff, Crash Worship, which mm-hmm. before that mm-hmm. was Blood Lake. Mm. Blood Lake was from Vista. Yeah, and they were fucking badass, and they played with all the biggest bands. Dude, mm-hmm. they played with Dayglow. They yeah. played with fucking every rad band back in the day and it was just like wow and blood lake was like instrumentally a real like a normal band like guitar drums bass vocals yes and yes the, yeah so yeah was simon right was the yep. main yeah yep. And then, yeah yep yeah. and that's where rick kind of got all his influence was hanging out with those guys mm-hmm. all the time when we were in high school yeah and I wasn't really doing that. I already had like a cover band that I was playing in at the time. Talk about band names, Blood Lake and Crash Worship, fucking best band names. Right? Mm. Dude. No, I know. Yeah, no, sure. no, I know. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. dude, that's like me and my best friend, Sean, will sit there and fucking, we, we just text each other like all day. Like not all day, but every once in a while, like at least once a week, I'll be like, dude, what about this name? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And we just, we come up with these names. You're like, Oh, check this one out. Yeah. You know, it's fun. But yeah. at the same time, you're like, when you hit that one, you're like, Oh, that's going to be the one. Yeah. Cause you know what the thing is too? You could come up with the most brutal fucking name in the world. Mm. You better fucking live up to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you fucking yeah. play some sissy ass music or something. Yeah. And you're playing in <laughs> so, some yeah. band called, you know, I think that band uh, Hugs and Kisses did that. They were like super fucking brutal. We were thinking of doing that because yeah. we um, since we we're since we we're kids, back in the day before there was pudding pops. We but right like we like when the pudding pop came out, we used to we, to this day we still call each other pudding pop. Uh-huh. Like you're such a pudding, 
Like, <laughs> yeah. you're just a little wimpy pud, you know, like, that's wimpy sick. pudding. So, like, you know, we were even thinking pudding pop would yeah. just be a funny fucking just, name. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thing you didn't do it, though, because of the Bill Cosby shit. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, no, that's definitely, yeah, probably not a good idea. Yeah, someone will ruin it if it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So. I really like the name Punk Fucks. Uh, P U N K F U X. Oh yeah. So we might go under that, but there's so many fucking names that we're looking at still. I have this one that I would like to share, and I and I did not come up with it, and it is gonna probably get us canceled on the, if I say it. But I'm gonna <laughs> go. Ahead, okay. So um, there's this band uh, called Here's Collective, um, and and Jenna is uh, the singer, um, and so she was telling me that she want she's tr- she's trans so she was telling me that she wanted to make a shirt that says um p h a g g a t so it's like pronounced the you know f word faggot that you can't say but it's pahaget and so people right. would be like yeah. what the fuck are you doing wearing that shirt and they're like right. what it's pahaget. my favorite band pahaget <laughs> <laughs> like dude i so i think a queer band needs to start and call themselves pahaget yeah that's like the fucking best yeah. name that would be it would be fun. Yeah. Anyhow, right? all the yeah, the good ones are the good ones aren't all taken. You just have to like really dig deep for it. Yeah. Not that not that any of the guys in this certain band I'm gonna bring up that I saw not too long ago are trans, but they um are called the Spice Pistols. Have you seen them? Oh yeah. They're fucking good. Just because yeah. you can't go wrong playing pistol songs. Yeah. But oh, and they, they do all, it in they drag, all dress right? and drag. Yeah, yeah. it's so. like a New York Dolls kind of. Yeah, it's vibe. fucking great. Yeah. They're all old, fucking big, lug-looking dudes <laughs> yeah. that are dressed in dresses yeah. and shit with makeup on. You're like, wow. To go full circle, the bass player for PIO right now is the bass player for Spice Girls, which is kind of weird. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I just found out that hmm. the singer from shit, Flogging Molly, used to be the singer for Fastway or something. Oh yeah. Is that true? I think so. Dude. Yeah. Which is fucking Fast Eddie. Yeah. God, my God. Like, <laughs> you know, like Motorhead. I play in a a band called Snaggletooth. It's uh-huh. a Motorhead cover band. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. I yeah. just saw a photo of the Damned playing with, with um, what's his name, Pfft, on bass. Really? Lemmy, Lemmy on bass, yeah. From what? From, from Lemmy from Motorhead on yeah, bass. Yeah, but what was the band? The Damned. Whoa. It was really weird. What a trip. Yeah. And like I, he sat in with them? He, he, I, I mean, it's just a f- one photo, and you could see you could see Dave Vanian for sure, and you could see Lemmy for sure. And then I don't know who else it is, but it's like damned with Lemmy. And I was Whoa. like, what the fuck is that? That's rad. Yeah. Did you see him when he was playing in his freaking, uh, he was doing that, that side band with- Oh, um, with Dave Grohl? No, no, no. Did no, way later? before that, he was doing a- um, like a rockabilly band. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's super into rockabilly, like, because it's just like good. Ro- he likes yeah. that rock and roll sound. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it was like one of the famous guys from, like, I think the drummer from Stray Cats or oh, something, yeah. and some other famous stand up bass player. Mm. And, or, no, no, like he was the bass player, but some mm. other stand, some other guy that played guitar in one of the, yeah. one of the big, big bands like that. Yeah. One of those punkabilly bands. Mm hmm. Which isn't bad. Some of their stuff's okay, but I, I'm not mm. a big fan of it. Nah, not me. Yeah, I'd rather listen to hardcore. I'd re- rather listen to uh, punk rock and somewhere in between, like The Accused. Mm. You know, um, I think the, we talk about it a lot, um, Rich and I, and we call it, you know, um, crossover. Yeah, sure. All that shit was our favorite. Yeah, English mm-hmm. Dogs. Yeah, fucking amazing. The Accused was one of like the, yeah. the most informative. Yeah, just fucking amazing. Yeah, Bad Brains, fuck, you know the last, like you you brought up Quickness mm-hmm. album. That's super kind of metal rock mm-hmm. and rollish, but just a great fucking album. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they could do it because who was gonna tell them anyways? Because they were so fucking amazing at the time. Mm-hmm. They were the hottest thing, and just I'd seen them so many times, dude, and it was fucking amazing. I saw them at Fenders. I saw them like I said at Iguanas. And then I saw him at the Long Beach uh, College that time when they did the Quickness tour. Yeah. But yeah, you know another band that that I and I don't really talk about this too much, but well, I mean I do, but I think that people should know more about 
and and listen to it more is uh, some of the good fucking psychedelic stuff that's out there. Like I was, a, I'm a huge Butthole Surfers fan. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and uh, there's a band out right now called The Freaks, spelled F R E E K S. Fuck. Huh. And then Death Club even, <laughs> right? I mean, do you, yeah. do you do you do you like observe that or at all? Yeah. Do you, do you you do know that that's what you guys sure, do? Sure, okay, because yeah. because dude, it's just phenomenal. I mean, I can't tell you how much I love. I've already told you how much I fucking love that band, but mm. like anything psychedelic, yeah. especially hyper psychedelic, yeah. like that's the freaks that are like ripping musicians if you get to yeah. see them. But and and but their music's not like mellow fucking, um, which you think nice of psychedelic is like a jammy. No, thing. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, they're fucking high, mm. amped and mm. and rad. There's a um, butthole servers documentary that's that's in the works. It sounds like it's gonna be pretty. Sick. A gnarly movie I'm mm. hearing that's supposed to come out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A friend of mine's yeah. working on it. Should be wow. should be good. Rad. There you have it. Episode thirty. Of the cold and culture podcast. <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, thanks to Tad Miller and uh, his uh, work in Crossed Out. Yep. And you for paying attention and listening and caring and giving a shit about what we have to talk about. And thanks to these people who make me sound like an organ. Earthquaker devices. Uh, anyhow, speaking of Prague, or Quaker, um, Fender, Guitar, Heartwork Coffee, uh, we'd like to thank Andy, Andy, and Becky, and Becky, and um, all of you, and make sure you uh, check out um, all of our other podcasts, available, available to stream, Jesus Christ, ever, wherever you get your shit from. It's too much, Anyhow, check it out. Uh, get our podcast, uh, Apple Podcast. You can unfortunately get it on Spotify. I don't know where else. Um, do whatever you want. Just check out our shit. Like, support, follow. We appreciate you. Uh, see you on the next one. Thanks. <laughs>